This is Woody's world, and in my world, when you come in for the rides, you can be this short, like Benjamin Hockman, <laughs> and you can get on the ride if you want to. If you've got, if you've grown a set, you can get on the ride. Woody's world is sponsored by Shanahan's Steakhouse. We we're just talking about Moutier, ta ra ra, Moutier, ta ra ra, Moutier. Nuggets gonna make a mistake. They're not going to draft him tonight. Uh, Moutier, as, we, as we've discussed, uh, was the number one recruit out of Texas, the number two recruit in the country last year. And I just want to kind of go beyond the lines. There's a the program on ESPN called Outside the Lines. I'm gonna go beyond the lines, <laughs> beyond the goalpost, and tell you why I like him so much. This We're talking about a good kid here. And, and the NBA, we just we're, we spend days talking about DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah, he is a great talent. He may be the second best sitter in the world. He's not as good as a guy named Anthony Davis in New Orleans, but he's number two. The thing about DeMarcus Cousins, do you really want him to be the face of the franchise? Is that, If you're the Lakers, do you want him to be the face of your franchise for the next year's next several years. If you're Sacramento, do you want him to be, the, if you're the Nuggets, do you really want another Carmelo Anthony to be the face of your franchise? No, you want somebody who is a good kid. That's not Ty Lawson. He's not a leader. He's not a guy that you really say, son, this is our star in Denver. A guy, you know, okay, last night he texted with his bong next to him. No. <laughs> Moutier, let me tell you a little bit about him. So when you see him go tonight in the first seven picks or he lasts and goes to Detroit at number eight, uh, Moutier is going to be the best player out of this draft. It's not Russell. It's not Towns. Moutier, I promise you, is going to be Allen Iverson without all the baggage. Bigger than Iverson. An Iverson with a body. An Iverson that likes to practice. An Iverson that's going to be a good team player. Moutier was born in Africa in what was then Zaire. He became and has become the most famous player out of Zaire, which is now DR Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo, since a guy named Dikembe Mutombo. And he speaks like 14 languages like Mutombo did, and he's a soft-spoken, really good kid who was, whose father died of a heart attack when he was two years old. His mother raised coffee and vegetables in the backyard of their house on a dirt road and sold it to people who came along or go into the village and would sell coffee. She raised uh, the kids. <clears throat> they sought asylum in the United States because of all of the issues that existed in then what was Zaire. A lot of terrorists, a lot of revolutionaries. She wanted to get out and protect her family. She was allowed to seek asylum in the United States and they were put in Texas. Here's a young man that doesn't know anything about basketball. He doesn't know anything about speaking the English language. His older brother did and taught him as they did in the schools. And he became an outstanding basketball player and grew to six point six foot five and was the greatest player in Texas for two years. Larry Brown, who was scouting him, as a sophomore and a junior, said, this is the greatest young point guard I've ever seen. Larry Brown played, played, played point guard on a championship team with Rick Barry and Doug Moe. He finished his career in Denver as a point guard. He was a whirling dervish. People don't remember Larry Brown. He had played at North Carolina, and he was a great, great undersized point guard, 5'9", 5'10". Larry knows how to coach point guards. One of them, Chauncey Billups, won a championship with Larry in Detroit. Another one, Allen Iverson, would never have accomplished anything if Larry Brown hadn't been his coach and actually willed them. The two of them came on the same page and got Philadelphia to the NBA Finals. He knows about point guards. I watched him for years coaching this league in New York and in Denver and Detroit and all of San Antonio and all the other places. He said, best young point guard I've ever seen. I trust Larry Brown when he says stuff like that. In high school, he went to two different prep academies. The second one closed after he left. He wanted to sign with Larry Brown. He wanted to be taught by Larry Brown. The problem was he was going to be declared inac inac academically ineligible at SMU because of not his intelligence, but because the prep academy was a little bit shady and had a lot of basketball players there. 
So he had two choices. He could uh, sit out a year as a freshman or, and he turned down offers from Kansas and Kentucky, he wouldn't have been able to be academically eligible at those two places. Those are a couple of good places you might play basketball. So what did he do? His mom was living in a very modest house. He bought his mother a house, took a $1.2 million contract from the China Basketball Association, Chinese Basketball Association, and he got a just he got a, a, an Under Armour contract that paid him uh, close to a million dollars more. Went off to China, averaged 18 points, got sprained his ankle, and at that point could have just sat out the rest of the season. But what he chose to do was work hard, get back. He got back to the playoffs and almost got his team, which is tough to pronounced, but I will say they are the Southern Tigers. He got them to the semifinals in the Chinese Basketball Association. And there are people who say, well, it's not two years ago. He, unlike all these other players, actually has played professional basketball. He has seen what it's like. He played against a number of point guards who used to play in the NBA. He outshined them. Maybe they were at the tail end of their careers, but each Chinese Basketball Association team like the Japanese baseball teams, has two Americans on the team. So it wasn't as if he were playing against guys off the playground. He was playing against quality players. So he proved himself over there. He is going to be a guy that averages about 20 points. He's got to improve his mid-range jumper. He's 39% from beyond the arc. He's not a particularly good free throw shooter at this point in his career. He's 19 years old. He has got things, though, that he's got characteristics that you love in a player. He is a whirling dervish like uh, Larry Brown was. He can get to the rim, he can dunk, he can rebound. He is a genuine point guard. He loves to distribute it. And if you go to YouTube, you'll see it. And I just can't understand why there are a few teams backing off of him. Oh, he's not a great shooter. Magic Johnson wasn't a great shooter when he came to the NBA. Julius Irving, I covered the NBA and the ABA. I saw those young great players become great shooters. Under the training eye of someone who is a good coach, he will add the mid-range jumper to a great three-point shot. He's got a little hook in his shot. But Moutier, to me, is the guy, and I think the Nuggets are going to make a mistake because I don't think they are willing to really take the risk to end up with who could be the greatest player in this year's draft. I'm Woody Page, and that's my opinion, not shared by everybody, but it's my opinion. Shanahan Steakhouse. I'm excited. I'm going to Shanahan Steakhouse. It's my birthday this weekend. I'm going to go celebrate my birthday at Shanahan Steakhouse. I want all of you to join me. I said yesterday, if somebody comes up to me in the restaurant and says, I heard you talking about Shanahan's and your birthday, and I'm going to buy them a dessert, maybe a piece of pie. So if you come up to me in Shanahan's and I'm there, that's a deal. What a great deal. You, desserts are probably, what, 10 bucks, you think? So go to Shanahan's. <laughs> Even if I'm not there and say, <laughs> Woody and Les sent me, I want dessert. And you'll love it. It's a great restaurant. It's the best. Shanahan Steakhouse. Make your reservation at shanahansteakhouse.com.